Hey there, I pray this video encourages you and helps you grow and become more like Jesus. Follow along with the notes linked in the description. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. There is a sacred responsibility on parents to raise children because children are a gift from the Lord, the Bible says. They're precious. And just like I said, when it comes to dating, you're dealing with someone who has a soul. Well, when we have children, we have to understand something. They are created in the image of God and they also have a soul as well. And how we handle our kids is very important to God. God talks strongly actually about that in scripture in many places. Today I want to talk on some basics of how to lead spiritually. Next week we'll get more to the discipline and uh, training of our child, of our children. But oh, did the kids get scared in the room? The teenager? No, it's not like that. Uh, so we're going to cover more of how do we lead spiritually and dad's I really help today, uh, hope today will help you. Uh, now being a dad or moms, being a parent is not easy, right? But there's a, there's a simple thing I use to help me be a faithful, godly parent in my home. And so we're gonna cover that today and I'm praying today too that dads, you're able to be encouraged by this. Maybe you weren't raised in a home where there was a dad or maybe dad was there, but he wasn't present. Do you know what I'm saying? The unfortunate thing that can happen as well is that dad is there, but he's not actively involved in your life. And so I see that the damage of a dad not being there or not having active engaged dads has affected our society. In fact, uh, psychologists and all the social studies are going on even in recent year here are all saying that when mom and dad are both present and active in the home, your children are more likely to thrive. How many know that's the truth? I mean, we already knew that, right? Um, but now they're, they're doing studies on it once again. And one of them is in my links on the, on the, uh, on the grow, um, article that I have up and the sermon notes that I have up where it basically says they surveyed over 30,000 kids in many different nations and it came back that if both parents are active, those children are more likely to thrive. We could have already said that. We already know that by experience, but the world is kind of catching up and realizing, uh-oh, our next generation's in trouble because of the breakdown of the home. And there's just no other way of, of, of communicating that. But thank the Lord. I mean, there's no other way of getting around that. That's just the truth. That's just reality. But thank the Lord, God's grace can still work. Amen. We talked about that last week, how there might be a single parent in the house today. And I uh, just want to applaud you for being so strong to, to play both roles in the home. And thank God that he can, he can still work through that situation. You know who else we need to thank? Grandparents. Grandparents have stepped in. My goodness. Yeah, grandparents. So thank you. We applaud you as well for that. Dads, we need you. Simple as that. We need you. Statistics are alarming that when there's not a dad in the home, things do not go well. Again, I'm not going to go into the litany of, and the list of, of things that happen. There's many of them. Uh, children are at higher risk for multiple things that are not good. But when a dad is present, that risk lowers dramatically. Uh, dads, when you're, when you're present and you're helping out, guess who else is really happy in the marriage? The wife, right? And we want our wives to be happy and we want our wives to do well. And so dads being present really helps the stress of mother as well. So there's just so many benefits of dad being there. And I just want to say thank you, dads, for showing that you care about God by being in the house right now. Thank you so much. <clears throat> we appreciate that. We know many are traveling today, seeing their dads and, and spending time with their dads. So grandfathers and whatnot. So it's, I'm sure there's many that are not here that we could say thank you to as well. Again, you can see from the Fatherhood Initiative website, you can see some alarming statistics and some positive ones about dad's involvement. And that's on our website at calvarydover.org after the sermon notes. So can you imagine though now a home where mom and dad are both serving the Lord. 
How strong of a family is that going to be? So not just a good moral husband and dad and a good moral wife and, and, and a mother, but how about God also in that home? So how about this? What if God wants you to have such a thriving family that you're able to help other families who need help? That is really where God's trying to go with the whole family unit is that we can be a blessing to the nations. That we can show Jesus that we can be a strong family. And even if we've had the unfortunate case of divorce or marriage breakdown and family breakdown, God can still heal and work and use your family to bless other families. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. God's doing that. Uh, in the future here, we're going to have some people share in July about God working in spite of those circumstances. It's going to be good. Let's go, to, let's go to scripture today. Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm praying that we can be healthy families, spiritually healthy families that can help other families in need. And uh, it begins with godly parents. It begins with what the scripture says to do in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we're going to start with verse 1. And these were commands, the commandments were given to the people of Israel. And God is preparing them for the promised land. And he needs them to know that your family and your parenting is important to civilization, to the well-being of this community. And it starts off in verse 1. It says, These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. And you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord, meaning to obey, to revere, to follow him, to respect him so much that you will do what he says. Okay? And to be honest with you, the Lord is a powerful, holy, strong God too, isn't he? So there's many instances in scripture where people were literally afraid of his presence because it was so powerful. And God, there's an element to this, to that. But God is also really calling us to obey him, to revere him, to hold him in high esteem and to follow his word. And it says, and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. Everyone say, if. if. Okay, if you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Who wants to live a long life? <laughs> they, they wanted to live a long life. They had spent time in, in Egypt as slaves. They were set free. They wanted to live a long life. And he's saying, if you obey my decrees, you will. And it says this in verse 3, listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. There's that fear of the Lord. Then all will go well with you. So everyone say then. Then, then all will go well with you. And you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey. There was a prosperous land, the promised land. Whenever you read the scriptures and you see milk and honey, it's referring to the prosperity of that land. So you'll be in this land just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. So he begins to give us the next set of instruction in verse 4. Listen, O Israel. So all people of God, listen. The Lord is your God, the Lord alone. In Hebrew, this has been called the Shema, which means to hear. Okay? The Lord is your God. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Church, there is no other God to worship. Amen. And all the lowercase gods, G, lowercase G gods, uh, there is no one like our God. There's no negotiating in, in my home because here's the reality. Like, why would I tell my kids a lie that there's other gods to worship? Why would I lie to my kids? There's only one God to worship. His name is Yahweh, Elohim. He is one God. Okay? And he is the only one, and there's no one like him. So there's only one place to worship. And let me tell you this. It's important as parents that we are careful what or who we worship. Because our kids will repeat what, what or who we worship as well. 
Who do you worship, parents? What do you worship? Because sometimes we worship things we shouldn't, like man-made idols and belongings and things. Who we worship or what we worship matters because our kids are watching everything and they will repeat our worship. They will. Number five, this isn't a worship that's just, I have to worship, I have to go to church. No, it's a, it's a worship from love. A love for God. Verse five, and you must love the Lord your God with just half of your heart. Uh, what does it say? Oh, good, you're reading it, good. That's why we need, we need the scriptures. All of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, not a part of you, but of your whole life. So God gets your love, not just at church, not just in your devotional time in the morning before you go to work, at work or after work. No, God gets your whole life. I pray that we realize the gravity of that, that he gets our hearts, our minds, our talents, our abilities, our money, our passions, our dreams, our positions, our parenting. He gets it all. And we love him. And how do we love him? The Bible says we love God by obeying his commandments. We love him that way as well. We, he loved us, so we love him back. We are faithful to do what God calls us to do. Verse six, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Give your whole life. Verse seven, repeat them again and again to your children. So verse six in the NIV says, impress these things on your heart. Impress the commandments of God on your heart. Impress the things of God on your heart. And then repeat them again and again. Impress them on your children. Why is that important? How many know out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is in your heart is going to come out. It's going to come out in your words, in your actions. Church, we as parents must have God on and in our hearts first so that he comes out as a natural overflow of our relationship with God. God's talking to the parents here first and the whole community. God wants you to have a relationship with him so much that your whole heart is in with him. And because of that, you can't help but express God in your life. For, for me, that's what I grew up in. My dad and my mom, this, this wasn't their life. Church wasn't their life. God was their life. I mean, they, who they were on stage or in a counseling appointment is exactly who they were at home. They were not fake. I saw real faith. They were full-time believers, full-time disciples, full-time pastors. They feared the Lord and they taught us to fear and obey God as well. It, what you see is what you get here too. This is who I am. God is my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. In other words, what I'm trying to say is it shouldn't be hard for your kids to know what you care about. They're going to see it. They're going to find out what matters to you the most. In our home, what matters first, most of all, is God. Growing up, that's what I saw. So because we worship him, there is no other God to serve. And there's no other God to love like him. Praise the Lord for that. So that he's on my heart. He is on my parents' heart. And because of that, verse 7 says, talk about them when you're at home. Talk about the commands of the Lord. Talk about his ways, his kingdom. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads. As reminders, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Let me talk about this for a moment. God was so much a part of their life that no matter what they did during the day, they talked about God. Now, there's a key element to this that we might miss. The kids were around their parents. We're living in a society where we're so separate from our kids nowadays. We're so busy. That's very concerning for us. How can we pass something on that's impressed on our hearts if we're never around our kids? 
I'm about to get to that in a moment, so hang on. Okay, but let me, let me focus on something here that's important as well. This scripture was not talking about lecturing and sitting kids down in a classroom and teaching them. This was talking about an everyday life conversation with your kids. That God is so part of your life that he comes out, whether you're driving, whether you're getting up in the day, going to bed, whether you're doing yard work, whatever, God might bring something to your thought and your mind to tell your kids about. Or to thank God in front of them. <clears throat> we, we like to tell kids testimonies of what God's done in our life so they can recall all the good things that God has done in our home and our families. So I'm not going to sit my son down and my daughter down and teach them something and then that's it. No, we're going we're gonna to talk about God whenever we want. Okay, it's not a compartmentalized moment together. It's, it's a life together. Now, here about, how about this? Should we tie scripture to our wrists and our foreheads? Okay, this is uh, something that kind of appeared in the New Testament. Some of the zealous priests had boxes on their heads and scriptures uh, between their eyes and on their wrists. And, and they took this to the next level. And that's not what God's saying to do. What he's teaching here is keep the word of God in your mind before your mind. So before you think or before you decide to do something, what does the word of God say? Okay? And then before you go and do something, what does the word of God want your hands to do? That's what he's saying. The word of God, his command should guide your thinking and your actions. So you don't literally have to walk around with boxes of scripture in them, okay? Which some priests did in the New Testament. Now when it comes to doorposts and stuff like that, hey, that's up to you. Now, if you have really bad handwriting, I would think, you know, it's twice about that. <laughs> My wife would not want me to write scripture on our doorposts. <laughs> that would be a mess. But maybe you have nice framed scripture verses around the house and reminders of the scripture that sticks out to you. How many have that right now? I know we do. We have different references here and there. Yeah, why not? Why not keep that before our kids' minds? In a car, you can have three by five cards of scripture. Just don't put them in the windshield, all right? Don't block your view. You can do a lot of different things to keep the word of God before you as you go about your day. The word of God really says, store his word in your heart so that you may not sin against him, right? So to have, to have the word of God stored in your heart helps you to live according to the word of God. So I wanna give you uh, three presents for being godly parents. And this is what I mean by, I think this is simple. I think it's hard to be a parent nowadays at times. Uh, it's not easy. Let's just say that. It's not easy. Okay? You have to intentionally apply yourself. But these three presents, and it's a play on words, okay? Just follow me here, okay? It's not gifts. Um, these three presents are helpful to remind me what I need to do. Number one, be present with God. Okay? As, as, to be godly parents... We must be present with God first. My family can't afford me not fellowshipping with God. Your family can't afford you not being with God. Are you hearing me? We need the presence of God. We need to slow down, parents, and get with God. Because we're the thermostats in the home. We set the temperature and the hunger and the stirring and the desire for God in our homes based on how we live and how we conduct ourselves. So for me, it's priority that I'm hanging out with God. I'm praying. I'm reading scripture. I'm studying it. I'm meditating on the word. I'm storing it in my heart so that I can be led by God to live out the scriptures. Let me tell you what happens spiritually. So you know that, you know, we're not just reading the Bible just for knowledge. We're storing in our hearts because the Bible is the sword of the spirit. And the spirit will use the scripture you've stored in your heart and mind to quicken you to live a certain way and do certain things. In other words, you'll be living life and, and the spirit will go, hey, you read that verse today. That's exactly what you need to do right now in this moment. I mean, this is my life. 
This is what I get to experience because I'm storing the word of God in my heart and then I want to be led by God. And so when I encounter things, I go, oh man, I just read that yesterday. I just read that today. I need to do that. I need to help or I need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Whatever scripture God has stored in your heart, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit uses it to help you live a godly life, especially right in front of your kids, amen? Number two, we need to be present with our kids. I was talking about this a moment ago, that the disconnection we have of our kids is scary. We're competing with screens, aren't we? We're competing with screens. We're competing with busyness of life and sports and other activities. How are we going to pass down God to our kids if we never have quality time with them? What good is it for our kids to gain the whole world but lose their soul? What good is it for our kids to be so busy with so many, so many activities but they don't know Jesus by the time they leave your house? It's scary, isn't it? In order to pass things down, we need to actually spend time with them. So let's not miss this important point. We need a relationship with our kids. It's vital to the well-being of their development and our bond and our ability to pass God on to our kids. We need to have quality time with our children. Again, I'm not sitting my kids down, okay, at a certain time of the week just to teach them Bible things and then all of a sudden I'm not present anymore. How mean would that be? That would be weird. We're not teaching and sharing faith in the absence of love, but in the presence of love. That old phrase that everyone refers to, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. It's true. Your kids will more likely listen to what you have to say when you love them on the way. When you have fun with your kids. Parents, let's have fun with our kids. I know you do, I've seen it. We all try, right? We need to have fun with our kids. We need to play, we need to have quality time with them. We need to enjoy their presence so that they'll hear us out when we have things to say. If your relationship with your kids are distant, I wanna encourage you to reprioritize your life and begin to recommit to having quality time. Just so you know, whenever you're really disconnected from your kids, it can be a little awkward when you get back together. How many of you know what I'm talking about, maybe? Maybe you sat there and you go, there ain't nothing coming out of my son or daughter's mouth. It's okay, your presence is powerful. When it comes to dinner time in our home, TV off. No technology. I've been guilty of that a few times. I have my phone. That was bad. Bad. <laughs> no technology. No TV. Right? Oh, wait. Let me go back to this. Dinner together as much as possible. Parents, we need to have dinner with our kids. Studies are saying, and we don't even need the study to tell us how healthy it is. It's important to have stability in the home, to have family time with our kids. One of the ways you can do that, they all recommend, is having dinner together as much as possible. And I get it. I'm busy. I got meetings at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, whatever. I get it. But we need to have quality time with our kids on a regular basis. And one of the ways you can start is by sharing a dinner together. Amen? Okay. All right, lastly, okay, you've hung out with God. You've stored the Lord in your heart. And now you're hanging out with your kids. Guess what's gonna come out? God. So it's our last present and go with me here. Present your faith. It's a different way of saying present. Present your faith to your kids. All right, uh, I present my faith by the way I behave by the way I respond, by the way I talk to my wife, by the way I talk to my neighbors, by the way I talk, period, and act, I present what faith looks like in many different circumstances, okay? And then secondly, we can teach diligently, we can intentionally teach our kids God's word. 
For example, when we're doing life or when we're sitting at home, let me give you an example in life. Okay, my kids and I are out in public and we all saw something, okay? And I'll say something like this, kids, and we've done this in the home too, we've done it in the car ride on the way home from places. Uh, what did we see? What does God's word say? How should we respond? That's how I've taught my kids. What did you see? Okay, we saw that encounter between two people. We saw something happen out there or you saw something even good. Okay, what does God's word say? How should we respond? That's something we simply can do with our kids. And then another way to be intentional in our home is study words in the Bible. Perhaps you go into a Bible concordance in the back of your Bible and you pick out the word trust and a few of you or all of you get a scripture about trust from the concordance and you read it and you share what does trust mean in this scripture. These are being, this is being intentional and this is also being intentional as you're living. All right, let me give you an example. Uh, one time we got, uh, we got something free and we weren't charged for it, okay? And I'll just, I forget what it was. It's happened a few times actually. Let's say it was a bag of mulch at Lowe's. And there's an extra bag of mulch in my car. Now I can go, I can say, hey, that's their fault, I'm good. My, my son's next to me. They gave me an extra bag. Or, or, I can go inside and say, hey, uh, I have an extra bag of mulch here you didn't charge me for. I need to pay for that. That's a demonstration of integrity. That's a demonstration of God's word. And so my son or daughter have seen us do that when that happens. I used to be, I used to work at Chick-fil-A back when it was at the mall. And when your drawer was wrong at the end of the day, you get in trouble, right? We don't want to do that to people. We want to make sure their drawer is equal to the sales. So it's zero. Everything's there. There's no, there's no loss of money. There's no deficit of, of change or, or dollar bills with the, with the surplus or with the supply of, of inventory. So we don't want that to happen to people. We don't want them to get in trouble. But we also don't want our kids to see that we take those kind of things, right? Right? Yeah, okay, cool. That's teaching your kids the word of God. That's teaching your kids to be honest, to have integrity. That's, an, that's a way you present your faith. In our home, uh, just to give you some examples, we love spending quality time with our kids around the dinner table, uh, playing games, sports, swimming, watching movies and shows, uh, family day trips. Shopping trips are more, like, they're more fun for me and Rachel, but not the kids. They're not big fans of those as much. We like to support and watch them do what they do, what they love. Uh, we spend Bible time together as a family. We read, we share what sticks out to us. We answer some questions or I'll pose some questions to the kids. I ask them to explain to me back what the scripture means. If they're off a little bit, I take the time to teach them what it meant because I want our kids to understand and properly interpret scripture. So dads or moms, that requires us to do a little study before we have that Bible time to make sure we're accurate as well. Um, we pass God down through the everyday lessons like I explained already at Lowe's or how we um, encounter people. Uh, the other night we were at Applebee's so we prayed for our waitress uh, just to show them that we love those who are in our community. Uh, we serve God together at church or uh, we serve people in our home. By the way, in Pastor Kuhn's home, church was non-negotiable. You go to church. And uh, I was invited to play on the travel soccer team and I didn't get to play. And that's okay. And when I became, uh, when I was in high school, I was a football player at Polytech and we kept losing every game. And youth group was on Friday nights. And I'm sorry, I'd rather win with Jesus than lose on that field every Friday. So I just didn't see the value in my life. And to be honest with you, the value of Christ was greater. And I wanted to be at church. And I became a leader in the youth ministry 
and served alongside my youth pastors. And because of that, I think God called me to be a youth pastor because that's how I became one for 11 years here at Calvary. But I decided to not, my parents wouldn't let me put sports or other things before God, all right? And there wasn't online church back then. But to be honest with you, there's a lot of time for everything else. Why can't we let God take, still have his place on a regular basis, right? Amen. And then if I was too tired and I didn't want to go to church one day, my mom and dad were so smart. They're like, I guess you need to go to bed earlier on Saturday night. Mm. Yep. Uh, real quick, a little side note when it comes to parenting. Sometimes we as parents will focus so much on our kids that we neglect our spouse. That's a no-no. Okay? I know this might step on toes today. But I just want to declare this because I meant to say this in the past couple of weeks. But parents, your kids are actually second or third. There's God, then your, your spouse, and then there's your kids. What good is it to have a healthy relationship with your kids, but not a healthy relationship with your spouse? Moms, dads, you need to keep your spouse before your kids. Now, I get it. Kids are time consuming. There's a lot that goes into them. All right? And so you may not spend as much quantity time with your spouse, but you need to have quality time with your spouse. In my home, this is what I saw. God was first. My mom and dad loving each other, smooching sometimes. <laughs> right in front of us. Little kisses here and there. I saw my dad serve my, my mom. I saw my mom serve my dad. They, they disappeared on date nights. They gave us $20 to get out of the house. <laughs> Things like that. Hey, just keeping it real. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I made sure I didn't come back as long as I could. <laughs> ah, I forgot my stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and stay out here. <laughs> and that was reality. You know, you know what I saw though? I saw that I'm supposed to love my spouse. I'm supposed to love my wife. And because my mom and dad are strong and healthy, guess who's still together? The family. The family's still together. Um, by the grace of God, all glory goes to God. My wife doesn't want all the credit. My parents don't want all the credit. No one, no one in our family wants the credit. It all goes to God. But all my dad's kids are serving the Lord now because of that, because of the faithfulness of God. And again, you know what's, what's amazing is God can redeem those lost years. So if you've been through a situation, where that has not been your case, God can repair and fix all of that. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, I wanna make a note too real quick. My first ministry and your first ministry is your home. Dad, your first ministry is your home. Okay, I, I love that you're serving at Calvary. Just, just, a, just a 411, we don't have enough people serving at Calvary, to be honest. But number one is your home is the first ministry. Did you know that a pastor is disqualified from ministry if he doesn't have a healthy home? Why? Because if you can't serve your own family, how can you take care of a flock like this? That's, that's what Paul taught Timothy in his letters to him. So when I'm on and I'm, I'm on the clock or I'm, the hard part is as a pastor, we're never off the clock. So, but when I'm here or when I'm working, I'm on. I'm all about serving the body of Christ. But I got to give you a heads up. When I'm off, the first people that get my attention is my family. Yep. Because if I don't care for my family, what good is it for me to care for this flock and then my own family's falling apart? What good is it for me to care for this flock but not care for my marriage and make sure that my wife and I have a strong union and connection? I, d I disqualify myself if I don't spend time in the ministry of my home. And so thank you for your patience, waiting for me to get back to you, or if I've missed a call or I've missed an email, thank you so much for your patience because if I'm not getting back to you, it's most likely because I'm loving on my, parent, or on my family, and I love my parents, and... I'm being a parent and I'm obeying God's word. That's what I'm trying to do. So thank you for your patience with me on that. Yeah, amen. 
Why don't we stand together to close? And I really mean it. This is our closing. I think last year we had three. I mean, last week we had three. You got to be able to laugh at yourself a little bit, you know? Imagine, if you will, mom or dad, grandparents, caretakers, you're reading the Bible. And you come across Proverbs 27. It says this, the godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. That hit me. Let that sink in for a moment. Blessed are the children whose parents are godly. None of us want our kids to not be blessed. We all want our kids to be blessed. But we're not talking about finances here. We're talking about integrity. We're talking about the value of a relationship with God. We're talking about here where a kid is blessed because mom and dad are doing what the word of God says. Because of that, it's bringing so much life to the home. Parents, your walk with God is so critical to the health of your home and to the joy of your children. Let's say you read this before this one, Proverbs 14, 26. And why am I doing this? Because I told you earlier, we gotta be present with God, right? And then present with our kids so we can present our faith. And so this is what I read this week. In my personal time with God, this is what I read. Okay, Ryan, Pastor Ryan, he had a cup of coffee and he read this scripture and it hit me. And as a dad, it hit me. Those who fear the Lord are secure. Those who obey the Lord are secure. He will be a refuge for their children. You want security in your home? Obey the Lord. You want peace in your home? You want confidence? Obey the Lord. Do what his word says. It will bless your children. There's a reason why they would thrive if they followed the commands in Deuteronomy 6. As, as, as Moses said, do these things. This is what the Lord wants you to do. And you will be blessed in the land that he has promised you. Do these things and you will be blessed here today in Delaware or wherever you live online. And parents, let me encourage you. You can do this with God's help. But don't you dare try to be a parent and present your faith without a relationship with God and a relationship with your kids, your spouse. So that naturally, here's why. (laughs) Your faith is real looking. It's legitimate that when you are with God and your kids see that and they see you care about God, they go, man, my dad or my mom, they're not just preaching at me, they're living it. That's what convinced me is I watched my dad preach on Sunday, but I watched him live it all week. That's powerful. Same thing with my mom. It makes faith come alive. Our kids have walked away from the Lord and I'm not saying it's, it's us, but in our world, people have abandoned the faith, abandoned God in church, all right? They have walked away, and I fear part of it could be because they see one parent at home and one parent in public. Let us be this way, the godly walk with integrity. So are you giving your kids these three presents of a godly parent? Be present with God, be with them, present with them, and present your faith out of the overflow of your faith. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Fathers, have a happy Father's Day today. Be celebrated. We need you. You're, You're so important. Thank you. And for those whose fathers have passed, we mourn with you and we think about them. We do. We had a we had an unfortunate loss this past week. It breaks our heart here. And many. And it's a hard day for people too. So we're praying for God's comfort to be with you. I want to give you a heads up. You're going to see something different on the way out today. Our children are here at the doorways for our offering. Um, There's yellow containers, yellow buckets they're holding. This is for missions giving for the kids ministry. 
And so they're looking for pocket change. I don't know if anyone carries pocket change anymore. Anyone willing to give up their Aldi's quarter? <laughs> yeah. You just need that one quarter. Otherwise, you're willing to give it up for missionaries around the world. You're going to see kids next to our ushers. Thank you for your giving to our church. We couldn't be here. We couldn't have this air conditioning. I guess we got to fix some bathroom issues now this week. So thank you for your giving. Uh, on behalf of my family, thank you for your giving and support uh, financially because I couldn't do this full time if that wasn't the case. And I'd be pulled in many different directions with other work. So we're really grateful for your support of our family and all the families here that work here. Thank you for that. So as you go out, you'll see two giving opportunities, pocket change for the kids, and then your regular tithes and offerings for the church. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to that. Let's pray. God, we're grateful. And we're thankful that you have been a faithful father to us. You are good. You are good in all circumstances, Lord. And I thank you, God, for your word that helps us know how to be a faithful dad and mom. God, I pray you would help us to apply this message Lord, help us, teach us how to slow down and be present with you, to value our, our fun and relationship with our kids, God. Help us to break through the barriers that are in our face and in their face. Lord, I pray you'd break down any kind of coldness, Lord, between us and our kids or distance, Lord, you'd break through it. Lord, help us to just be even still in their presence, to be quiet, just to be present, just to watch a movie with them or hold on to them. Lord, just... Help us to rebuild that relationship if it's not there. Lord, I, I pray, God, that our kids would receive it. Lord, I pray that our kids would value quality time with their parents. The time is short. And Lord, I pray that we would find ways to present our faith. We love you, God. We thank you for this giving today. Help missionaries around the world be with dads, God. Increase their joy today. We love you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.